Hello everybody, I'm Yavor Abbott. We're here today comparing the Moza R9 to the Camus 15DD. Before we get started, this can't be an, a full identical exact comparison as the Camus is a 15 newton meter wheel versus the Moza Racing, which is a 9 newton meter wheel. But this is a very good video where I will go over some of the things that I like about each and some differences that I found with using both the bases and just so you know, this is an honest review and in my impressions on the wheel as I use them when it comes to the Camus 15 and the Moza R9. None of what I am saying is influenced by any means. This is exactly how I feel with each wheelbase and everything when I was using them and things that I've picked up in the time that I was using them. So without further ado, let's get into this. So when it came to the Camus wheelbase in racing, definitely was thoroughly impressed with the force feedback that this wheelbase could output with the 15 newton meters of force. So for racing, I went immediately into iRacing to a car that I know and a car that I've driven many a times, the TDI Cup car, and we were ripping it through here at iRacing. It's a car that I'm very familiar with, so I know how it feels when it comes to different types of wheels. I've driven it with my Fanatec, I've driven it with my Logitech, and now I was able to chance to drive it, of course, with the Moza R9 and the Camus. So, initially, uh, basic settings on the Camus with the 15 newton meters of force was just incredibly strong, and you could mimic a lot of different features when it came to, say, power steering. If you didn't have power steering, the overall heaviness of the wheel was definitely a huge different from the counterpart wheel that I was testing in this video as well, the Moza R9, which we'll get into a little bit more here shortly for the racing aspect. But overall, the feeling of the force feedback, whether it was extremely strong or not, I felt the fine new fine force feedback things were a little lacking when it came to the feedback with the Camus, such as rumble strips and cracks in the road and things like that. It was more, I feel, of a linear style pull and a push rather than a quick jolt. Now, I'm not sure if that's just something that maybe can be adjusted in the Camus software by them because I couldn't find any way to fine tune the force feedback in that aspect. For the tuning of the Camus, it was very straightforward. The app itself on the PC and on the phone are a very straightforward app. There's just basic settings that you can change and adjust. So it was a very easy setup to get a wheel setting that did feel very good. So with the finute force feedback things that I wasn't able to feel such as like I said Prepare rumble strips and stuff You'll like that the, the 15 guy. newton meters of force definitely made up for that in that aspect with the sheer just force that the wheel could put out now the 15 newton meter canvas is the heaviest base I've ever tried because I've like I said I've had my Fanatec and my Moza R9 which is 9 newton, newton meters as well as the Moza R5. So the Camus was the highest force feedback wheel I have in my possession. And a big thank you, of course, to Camus for sending it out to me so that I could get my hands on it, drive it, drift it, do all that. It's definitely an amazing wheel. The wheel itself feels very similar to the R... Um, the RS wheel, the, the stitching and the yellow stitching and stuff like that. And the button box is very clean. Everything's really easy to get to. And in a racing aspect, the sheer force that the wheel could put out with that 15 newton meters was definitely very incredible. So whether it lacked in the fine new details that maybe you would want to see in racing, such as hitting a rumble strip or being able to feel like the tire is slipping in a certain way, you know, that was the one thing I did notice with the Camus compared to other wheels that I tried. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if that's something that can be adjusted in the Camus setup. Um, I couldn't find anything in the Camus app or anything like that. Not sure if there's something I can adjust in iRacing. I'm going to be messing with that a little bit more. But that was really the only thing that I really found. And, you know, it's nothing super crazy, but if you're looking for those fine new details, the Camus is lacking in that aspect, I do feel personally. 
So when it came time to take the Boza R9 on track, I did go to obviously the same track in the same car in the same aspect so that it could do a very good comparison back and forth. So initially, obviously the Moza Racing R9 with all their different wheels and the shift lights and everything like that is definitely a huge win in that category for that wheelbase because of the fact that it has those peripherals. You don't need a secondary shift lights or anything like that. But the overall feel of the wheel is very similar when it comes to how heavy you could get the wheel. Now, obviously, you could not get the wheel as heavy, say, as the Camus 15. But if you noticed when going over some rumble strips in the video, you'll notice my hands are a bit more jolty. The forced feedback and the finite feeling when it came to the Moza R9, when it came to the small little forced feedback stuff, such as rumble strips and things like that, it was more of a jolt feel, more of like a, just a quick an initial jolt instead of like almost like a curved push, which I felt when I was driving with the canvas wheel. So the Moza R9 has a little bit better finite forced feedback, I feel, when it comes to feeling of the road. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is just my my personal feeling on how I feel about the wheels and what I felt when I was driving it. I do encourage you guys, if you guys are looking at all these different wheels, to look at some other reviews from other people because they may say something slightly different or find something if they're using other types of wheel bases. This is just things that I've noticed when I was using these bases. So the overall feeling of the wheel with the Moza R9 was very pleasant to drive. Of course, the force feedback was not as heavy when it came to the standard feedback of the wheel, being as it is almost ha less than half the force feedback uh, capability and sheer force that the canvas could output. Now, of course, the Moza Racing R9 base is a lot smaller and more compact, so you can obviously have your you know, wheelbase or your monitor a lot lower compared to the canvas. And, you know, there's a better, you know, aesthetically feel to it. The canvas is a big, chunky, you know, base, which is awesome. You know, it looks amazing. It's very sleek and very, you know, well built. It's just the Moza R9 is a lot smaller. It's more compact, but it also doesn't have as much force, say, as the Camus 15. So, but when it came to racing, my times, my lap times were all pretty much about in the same time bracket when it came to racing the Camus and or the Moza R9. I didn't find any real difference when it came to me being faster with one wheel or another when I was in a racing platform. So it wasn't like a difference of the 15 newton meters and everything like that, or the wheelbases made me faster. I was about, I was within a couple hundreds of a second of each other in my lap times. It's just the fine newton details I found in racing was a little bit better on the Moza R9 than I found in the Camus, but the Camus did make up for some of that with just sheer brute force of the 15 newton meter wheel. So if I could get my hands on a you know, Moza R16 or even an R21, then this might be a little bit different in my mind because those wheelbases have the ability to input even more force feedback and have the threshold to throw that much more wheel feel out. So overall, the Camus and the Moza R9 are very fun in racing and they have their fine little quirks, but now we get into drifting. So when it came to drifting, I went back to one of my favorite tracks, Aussie Drift Co. in Assetto Corsa in my new RTR Mustang that I've been working in a car that I'm super comfortable with and definitely have a lot of fun driving. So we started off with the Camus set on some drift settings with fine tuning them slightly after a while. And I found that the Camus wheel was extremely smooth when it came to drifting, when it came to rotation and everything like that, you can see the wheel rotated very smoothly. And it just goes to show the fact that, you know, just because it doesn't have those fine details doesn't mean that it doesn't work for every type of demographic driving. So when it came to drifting, the canvas wheel felt extremely nice because of the little bit, I guess, of the lack of those little finding details and force feedback, it made the wheel rotation very smooth. But I did find myself turning down the canvas to about 70% of what it needed to be because it was a lot higher and it would kind of almost do a stutter step rotation when it was super crazy. But then uh, there goes the little bit of lack of 
feeling if you notice going over the jump there was no like wheel like jolt or anything like that when the suspension compressed and stuff like that so there was a little bit of lack of feeling of what the front wheels were doing when it came to you know when the pavement changed or when I went over bumps and things like that that you would expect to feel in a car so the feedback felt incredible I found myself running a lot of very smooth lines and it just it was so much fun the little finding details were not as crazy noticeable when it came to drifting as much as it did racing when it came to the canvas wheel so that was definitely a a very fun experience with the Camus drifting in a set of Corsa and I know there's a bunch of other people that are using the Camuses for drifting and they absolutely love it. I have a blast drifting on the Camus wheel. You know, the, like I said, the lack of force feedback was not really that present when it came to the finding details because a lot of the time with drifting, all you really need is that feeling in the front wheels for when the car rotates which the, the canvas wheel replicates self-steer and the spin back of heavy caster and things like that very very well so it worked extremely well for when i was driving these cars and it felt very good when it came to street cars as well as high-end competition cars so now we switch it to the moza r9 which i've been drifting for a little bit more time but we're gonna go into with the moza r9 and give you guys what i felt when i was drifting it compared to the camus so staying true to the fashion of the earlier video with the same track and the same cars we brought the moza r9 to aussie drift Cup in the rtr using the rsv2 wheel so if you noticed initially right off the bat in that jump when it hit the ground there was a little bit of a jolt in the wheel just something you'd expect to feel with compression of suspension or just shear coming off the ground and hitting the ground you, you'll get that a little bit of a jolt feel now you could feel it in the camus but it was like i stated in, in the racing it was a little more of a push and i think that's the only thing i could find about the camus wheel that was very outstandingly different but very manageable in the aspect of the wheel so of course you'll notice a lot a little bit more joltiness when it comes to the moza r9 that's just because the it's reacting to the you know, changes of pavement the changes of elevation and you know the compression of the suspension so the final details are a little bit better but once again the camus outweighs that when it comes to the sheer force that it implements one thing i did notice and forgot to mention when we were talking about the camus wheel is when i started drifting initially i heard some clicking in the base and i kind of got a little worried and i found that there was just two set screws on the collar that were a little bit loose tighten them up clicking them away everything was great so overall you can tell when it came to drifting the both wheels stand in their own and can hold down exactly what you want to do of course you can mimic cars without power steering better when it comes to the camus because you can get that heavier wheel feel from the camus base that you can't get from the Moza r9 now the settings in the moza r9 are a lot more fine tunable because you can adjust the frequency of force feedback in the pinhouse app which is one thing that makes it very nice for fine tuning of the force feedback so overall feels with both the wheels for drifting they it, both of them are incredible if it looks on these videos the canvas does seem to be slightly smoother in rotation but that could just also be the settings i have on the r9 for a lot of road feel i want to feel a lot of road feel i want to feel what the front tires are doing those are things i couldn't really replicate too well in the canvas but overall both wheels are incredibly fun to drive and i can't thank moza racing enough for being a partner and canvas for being a partner as well and sending these out to me for me to get my hands on these and drive these and give you guys my honest opinions so in overall recap one few feature things i want to point out from the canvas and the moza r9 
So overall, the Moza R9 definitely has a lot going for it with all the different wheels and things like that that you can do with the shift lights and everything like that. The Camus wheel has big things for it as well with the buttons on the front of the base. It's definitely incredible if you want to run just a wheel but still have some buttons for, say, spawning the pits and things like that. Overall, I did like the software and the feel of the Moza R9 a little bit more, but I definitely love the sheer force put out by the Camus wheel, something I've never had the ability to have. And I hope this video gives you guys some good information and some good visuals if you guys are looking to get either the Mozo R9 or the Camus. So like I said in the beginning of the video, nothing in this video was influenced by any means by either company. This is truly my opinions on how I felt when I was using the wheels. So. I wanted to make my honest opinion on both of them. So I hope this helped you guys and gave you guys some little bit of information. Once again, a big thank you to Camus and Moza Racing for sending these out to me so that I can get my hands on them and use them and enjoy them. I hope you guys will enjoy whatever wheel that you guys get. Looking forward to doing some more videos on these wheels and maybe some future wheels and products here in the future. So as always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.